3D printed miniatures are never going to be high enough quality to pose a threat to any miniature manufacturers like Reaper or Games Workshop, right? Welcome back to Mini Junk, everyone. My name is Jarrett. So what I said in the intro, I would say represents my opinion of 3D printed miniatures up until very recently. Over the past few years, I've seen lots of examples and, and held samples of, of printouts of, of miniatures. And they all had something that, that kind of held them back, whether it be like a rough surface texture or heavy layer lines as they printed, or even just being this sort of crystalline not un, you know unpleasant material and just never you know not really having any detail so because of that i always felt that we were way off of ever having the ability to print miniatures that were high enough quality to be pleasant to paint and get a nice looking result but that's all beginning to change i would say and and this started for me when i watched a couple of videos uh one on squidmar and one on goobertown hobbies where they had samples that were sent to them by 3D printed tabletop. Daniel Herrero is his name, the gentleman that runs that channel. He sent them samples and they painted those up and they look pretty remarkable, but I wanted to see them for myself, you know, hands on. So I reached out to Daniel and it turns out they had been discussing, you know, they being his team, uh, cause he's running a Kickstarter. They were thinking about reaching out to me about my channel. So it worked out pretty well. And I talked to him about maybe getting a couple of samples sent to me to try painting, picked out some monsters. The thing is, he's running a Kickstarter called The Lost Adventures 3D Printed All-in-One Adventures. I'm probably getting the name a little bit wrong. I'm going to put a link below in the description of this video. I'd really encourage you to check it out. There's some really cool Kickstarter rewards in there. It looks like a great value for money. Now, I want to be clear, I don't know a lot about 3D printing. I know maybe enough to be dangerous. I'm not sure. I know there's things about having a bed and having spools and there's resin and there's plastic and I, and I don't know much so i don't know a lot about how you know my understanding is with the kickstarter you're going to receive the 3d files for all these awesome miniatures and then you can you know with the right equipment you can print them at home as much as you want so you can print all kinds of copies of these creatures which is awesome especially when it comes to like zombies and trolls and things like that where you might want multiples so daniel sent me a nothic which despite having played D, D in the past i had no idea what that was until now a dragon which you'll see in the video here and a troll and a zombie and they're all just really really impressive quality i took them out of the package they're clearly they're, they're like okay they're not plastic are they anyway they're smooth there's none of that roughness or layering they are, you know, there's no mold lines because there was no mold. There's little bits of, of roughness to clean up here and there, but really the prep is very simple, I would say. Maybe a little bit of gap filling needed to be done on the dragon, but very mild and not, not a pain in the butt at all. Now, I do know that the ones I was sent are printed on a fairly... I think high-end setup where you're using resin to print them. Daniel was saying maybe $300 for a, a high-end printer that could, could manage this kind of quality. I would say that's good for when you're going to print a whole lot of these miniatures, but also that's probably indicative that the price on these things is just going to keep coming down to the point where they're going to be very accessible to consumers. Now, I wanted to get this video out before the Kickstarter was over so I could sort of show you some of the miniatures and, and do a paint job on one of them. In this case, I'm going to paint the Nothic. You'll see the the paint process I went through in a sec and hopefully if you watch this soon enough you'll be able to have a chance to get in on the Kickstarter and I think they're also going to accept late pledges as well. Just really cool models, really cool miniatures and sculpts and the ability to print them is awesome. And yeah once again thank you to Her uh, Herrero. Thank you again to Daniel for sending me these samples. Daniel's channel once again I'll put a link to that. It's 3D printed tabletop and yeah let's get to the tape. Uh, let's get to the painting table. I hadn't really heard of the Nothic before and I googled a, an image of it and this is the final paint job I ended up with. It's not quite like the artwork but I did get the big green and yellow eye. Here you see the miniature after I primed it using Vallejo white surface primer through my airbrush and we're going to start out with a base of Bugman's Glow. What I'm thinning it with is this new product from Instar called Water Plus. They sent me a sample of it and I guess it works to thin your paint while still cross-linking i'm trying to think of their their language cross-linking the pigments uh ultimately I, i'm not going to do a full video on this product i don't think but i really like it as a thinner um as opposed to just using actual water or 
Um, you know, I'm not sure how it compares to a thinning medium, but it seems to work really well and I like it, so I'm going to keep using it. Um, and so here I'm just applying Bugman's Glow over the whole miniature. And when that's dry, I'm going to come through with a larger brush and apply Gilliman Flesh from Contrast Paint uh, from Citadel. And I did this on purpose because I did want to darken that flesh tone down a bit while pulling out some of the detail in the recessed areas and creating some shading. So always think of these contrast paints as a tool you can use uh, to, you know, that you don't just have to put them over a light or white primer. To highlight that, I'm just going to add Kislev Flesh. You can see how much I've added here and how I'm mixing up the, uh, you know, mixing it together. And I believe I added a little bit more of the instant. Nope, I added Glaze Medium this time. Uh, I do like Glaze Medium when I'm doing layers because you can get a little bit more of a feathered effect. And I apologize, some of the painting footage uh, for this video is a little blurry or a little out of focus at times on the miniature. And at sometimes I actually hold the miniature a little bit out of the frame, which is, I'm still trying to correct that. Uh, later on I start to get my focus issues figured out, but hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. All I'm doing is I'm applying this lighter mix to some of the raised areas, any surfaces that are facing upwards, like the tops of his legs or the top of his head or any sort of more more defined ridges of muscles, areas like that. After that layer though, I wanted to go a little brighter and start really catching the highest points and some of the sharper edges of, of where the defined muscles are and whatnot. And so I added a couple drops of white primer and a couple drops of the glaze medium and mix those up and so you'll see I get a much lighter shade and but as long as you're applying this uh, you know you keeping it fairly thin you can you should be able to get pretty decent layers and feathering going on even with a with this lighter mixture do this one more time with the primer and the glaze medium two drops of the white primer a couple drops of glaze medium and mix those up and you'll see it gets quite a bit lighter and this is going to be a final I don't want to say edge highlight it's not the right term but hitting the highest points um, the sharpest creases of the flesh things like that tops of ears tops of eyebrows whatever things like that that sort of modeled flesh tone that I saw in the artwork I take some p3 umbral 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 <laughs> um, umbral umber and I take a little bit of blister pack foam and you can see I'm holding it in my super rusty needle nose pliers I'm just gently dabbing on bits of this umbral umber color to create dark splotches and patterns on his back his uh, you know tops of legs tops of arms top of his head but then not necessarily going all the way down the arm or all the way down his leg. And so it creates almost like a natural set of markings that an animal might have. In a few spots, I probably get, um, 
you know blotches that are a little too big but i wasn't you know i'm not trying to win a contest here i just wanted to paint this guy to look pretty cool about this next step i took um vallejo game ink brown in the airbrush straight up no thinning and i was just using it to sort of create some darker patches that in a way are going to blend together the light highlights with the markings it's possible that by doing this i'm over darkening the skin and sort of reducing contrast too much because i know in the original artwork his skin gets quite light in spots um so this mm, pretty optional step. I kind of liked it, but part of me thinks I may have over darkened things. Then I do the same, th <laughs> sorry, my camera is flying all over the place. I do the same thing with sepia, but this time I'm using it to darken his feet and his hands. So just the extremities with the idea being to leave a little bit of lighter flesh tone and lighter highlights uh, in between, you know, and sort of on the lengths of his arms and legs, just create a little bit of tonal variety in the flesh tones. And then I even take black as the final step, but I mostly try to focus that on, uh, you know, inside where the sepia and brown were so that it's like a transition into darker shades in the mid back on the top of his head. And I think a little bit on the tops of his hands and feet. Yeah, here's where you can see I am failing to keep the miniature in the frame. I really apologize for that. I have, <laughs> I have trouble doing my airbrushing on camera lately for some reason, but hopefully you get the idea of what I'm doing here. I managed to get at least three seconds of footage with it on, on screen. The spikes on his back, normally I would take something like a uh, Zandri dust and maybe do the whole spike as if it's you know from where it emerges from the flesh but i wanted this to look like the flesh is essentially extending and then becoming this bony texture so i was creating a little bit more of a glaze uh, you can see i'm using a bone with some glaze medium probably about 50 50 or if not maybe even a little more medium and trying to feather it up towards the tips and then i took a bone which i then thinned with some of the instar water plus and i'm just you know working up away from you know not going all the way down to where I tried to blend I use the term loosely uh, these spikes but just you know about halfway up and just sort of make them more opaque towards the tips a little bit of paint had gone inside the eyeball area so I took white primer and just smoothly and carefully uh, restored the sharp edges of the eyeball at this point I was thinking I needed to do a pupil and iris until I realized that in fact his whole eyeball is effectively that color of green as if he's got this big crazy eyeball. Well he does have a big crazy eyeball he shoots necrotic beams out of or something like that. Then very simple step uh, while everything else was sort of well when everything else had dried I applied black all over the base working up towards the rocks instead of you know I didn't apply a texture around the rocks I wanted to do this almost a little bit more of a display fashion. Um, I don't know, I normally would use a texture, but this time I didn't, don't know why. Thought it would look good. Then I took Scale Color Ink Tense Yellow. I wanted to make this a smooth, bright yellow, as bright as possible on the white eye. It covered a little bit less well than I expected, so I do do a couple of thin coats here, letting it dry between coats. I think I even used an air, uh, my hair dryer to dry, the, dry between layers and you, what's nice about these 3D printed models is you can blast them with the hair dryer as long as you need to and they don't warp as well so far from what I could tell. Uh, whereas, you know, a proper resin would be or something like a Nolzer's miniature would be definitely warping under too much hair dryer action. Then I took black and just penciled in a pupil, keeping it as round as I could. Uh, or is it an iris? I'm not sure. But the black dot, you want to think about when the miniature is sitting flat, where would that need to be so it looks like he's looking forward. So that's why it's up a little bit higher in the overall eyeball as opposed to perfectly centering it, in which case he would look like he was staring at your belly button. So in hindsight, I don't know if maybe I should have used um, maybe like a green glaze from GW, but I used green ink 
and I wanted to create this sort of modeled pattern around the outer edges of the eyeball, leaving some of that bright yellow in the center. And it wasn't as opaque as I thought it would be, and, and it wasn't going on as well as I would have liked. So I still use it, um, but in hindsight, and as a tip for you guys, it might be better to use an actual green paint in this case, or like I said, maybe a glaze, or even like a green contrast paint, which I didn't have handy. I haven't picked up any of the green ones yet. I realized that I decided to grab Cabalite Green as a, you know, um, Caliban Green, I think it's called. That one's a little too dark. This one is actually still pretty dark, but I decided to use this to do the darkest area of green around the outer eyeball. I'm not in love with the final eyeball effect I achieved. Um, I think I could have done better, but this is where it ended up. And, you know, sometimes you just got to say, hey, good enough and move on. If you try to be a perfectionist with every miniature, uh, you really get bogged down. It can be frustrating. Despite what I just said, I did grab the brightest yellow I had handy, which was Flash Gets Yellow, and tried to restore a little bit of that bright yellow in the center around the, again, pupil, iris? I forget what that's called. But uh, And then I think I do it off camera, but I did restore some of the blackness to that uh, central dot because it you can see it looks like it's gotten some paint over. It's a bit faded. And then I actually put a dot of white. You can see it in the picture of the finished miniature or in the video, um, you know, the turnaround video. I put a dot of white slightly overlapping the pupil so that it looks um, like it's like a normal eye would look with light reflecting. I think that looks really good. You don't see it in the footage, but it's something that really brings the eyeball to life, so to speak. The boring part, I guess, is painting all the rocks. The rocks are nicely sculpted and have texture to them. I went around with Mechani Mechanicus Standard Gray from Citadel, slightly thinned, covered all of the rocks with that and then washed them. When they were dry, I washed them with Basilicanum Gray uh, contrast paint. Once again, uh, putting a contrast paint over an actual color, which works just fine, darkened it up and created some shading. And then when that was dry, I came in with Dawnstone, you know, make sure it's very dry. It doesn't look dry here, but it was. Um, and just highlighted with dry brushing some of the higher points on the rocks just to give them a little bit more three-dimensionality, a little more volume to them. And then I took Ushabti Bone and painted the toenails and fingernails. And I didn't get great footage of that, but here you can see me very carefully painting a toenail. So you get the idea of what I used it for. I also decided to brighten up the very tips of his back spikes and I did that using Screaming Skull, a little bit thinned and just right on the, really on the tips of those just to give them a, a very bright final point. This is a step I sometimes do on miniatures. It's, a, it's fairly um, optional, but I took black ink. What I like about black ink for black lining is um, it does dry somewhat translucent and a little bit faded rather than a stark opaque black. And I ran that around his face because the way his face overlaps the arm like that. I was trying to create a little bit of separation. And I also applied that between his hands and the rocks and a few other of his joints. Just trying to create some of that shade, deep, deep shading and, and separation. Here's the final Nothic on his base. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I think the lightest skin tones should have gone lighter per the artwork. But I think he looks very bestial and very organic with all the different textures and, and patterns on his skin. Um, like I said, really nice printed miniature to paint, very smooth, as good as many of the plastic miniatures you can buy, thinking about like Reaper Black and, and models like that. So really happy with it. Thanks again to Daniel Herrero. Make sure you check out the, three, the, the Lost Adventures, 3D printed adventures Kickstarter per the link below. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm possibly going to paint up some of the other miniatures he sent me, but uh, no promises. Consider subscribing, liking, and sharing with your friends, and I'll see you next time.